Josh Gates, host of the Travel Channel, Expedition Unknown, Hunt for Extraterrestrials, that if you one day do in fact prove that we are not the only people in this world or galaxy or what have you, it all starts with that schmoey show, Beg, Borrow, and That's deal. right. It really does. It all started there. <laughs> That'll be on my epitaph. We are not alone. That's right. Essentially. Yeah. No, It's a, it, this, this special is really cool. Uh, it kicks off tonight. I'm really excited about it. It's, it's, you know, it's a question that everybody has asked. Mm -hmm. You know, who hasn't sort of looked up at the stars at some point and said, what else is out there? So this was a chance to go literally around the world. We did about 50,000 miles, four continents, to investigate this question of life in the universe from NASA's mission control all the way down to, you know, experiencers who claim they've, you know, been abducted Mm -hmm. everywhere in between. So can you tell me what what is the closest that you came away saying, all right, I, I believe it. I believe it. I know we, we, we are not the only ones. On the science side, I walked away fully believing that there's life in the universe. You know, talking to some of the world's best astronomers, astronaut scientists, they're convinced now. There's a real consensus that, that uh, they're finding these Earth-like planets at a pretty alarming rate. So, you know, I, I think now it would be weird if there wasn't life in the universe. Earth is not as unique, I think, as we thought it was maybe 10, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So from that side of things, I'm, I'm all in. I mean, it just seems like there has to be. The, the, the conditions for life are, are out there, so there has to be. This other question of, like, are they, like, here and skulking around in the shadows and abducting people and probing them, that's that's a much more difficult question. Well, I don't think you've ever met Mike Del Tufo over there, our sound audio engineer. There are some times where I feel like he's an alien life form, sometimes the way he acts. Pod person? Uh, maybe. Yeah. So, no, Pod. But no, not like not like uh, Men in Black, where there, it's the Del Tufo suit over right. zipped up over I'm a little an alien. pugged. I'm the pug in Men in Black. You know? Yeah. How many people have you met that believe this because it's the only way they can explain what's happening. I think that's part of it. I mean, we are really in, like, in pop culture, in entertainment, in literature. Yes. We love aliens. I mean, they're, it's a big part of, of movie industry. You know, we love these stories. So I think every time somebody sees a weird light in the sky, a lot of folks just flash straight to, must be a UFO. I f- was driving to Here NFL we go. game day morning this very Sunday. Four in the morning, coming off the 405, and there was a big flash of bright blue light that lit up the sky three different times. And? I flipped out. And what do you think it was? I have no earthly idea. It's about, it's near LAX. I I don't know what it was. I, I was thinking maybe you can help me with that. Maybe you know. Are you losing sleep? Was. Are you no, are you I'm feeling not traumatized? I'm losing sleep, but I'm just. Did you hear anything about Sunday I, around I, 4 a.m. Pacific time? I did not. Time? No. I did not. <laughs> you ever heard? That? You were close to an airport, <laughs> yeah. so we have some possible sure. options here. There was no weather balloons right. anywhere. No. But no, look, we we met people on this on this uh, special who had stories that, you know, completely blow me away. There's a guy named Travis Walton mm-hmm. whose story was made into a film called Fire in the Sky. There was also a book. Travis is a guy that we met with that I've known. This guy was a a logger in Arizona, uh, up in the mountains with six other guys logging. Knocked off at the end of the day, headed home in a pickup truck in the in the in the woods. They see a bright light. Travis gets out of the truck. Mm-hmm. These other six guys stay in the truck. They're screaming, "Travis, don't get out! Don't get out!" They see him get blown off his feet by this light. He vanishes. You can go on Wikipedia. This guy's story is incredible. Mm-hmm. The six guys go back to town. The, the police assume that they've murdered this guy. I mean, they're coming back to town saying, oh, this, this buddy of ours vanished. You know, They all pass lie detector tests. A few days later, Travis Walton reemerges in town, emaciated, confused. Come on. It's one of those stories where, and these are like, these are like blue collar forestry workers. And you hear this guy's story and he has this, I mean, on paper, crazy story. He was abducted, he went up into the spaceship, and you hear it and you go, that's impossible. We're coming up on the 40th anniversary of Close Encounters. Yeah. Hitting the movie theaters It's the, the, this very month. Yeah. 40 years. It's Which also up. seems crazy. I know. But, you know, these you, people have these stories that are not easy to explain. Doesn't mean that mm-hmm. aliens abducted them, but I met all sorts of folks that left me at the end of their interviews feeling like I don't know how to explain this away. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app, and I'll be sure to help the NFL figure out what a catch is.